In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. That's part of the story told in the Gospel of Luke about how Mary and Joseph ended up on the road to Bethlehem where the baby Jesus was born. What was going on with that story of a census? Well, the Roman Emperor was wanting to count the people for tax purposes and to mobilise the army draft, or so the story goes. This was about maintaining control and keeping that Roman machinery of power turning. But there are other reasons for conducting a survey of who might live in your local area. When we think about the people who live around us, their lives, their work, and here we are on busy High Street in Chuong, we might discover that we really don't know who all of our neighbours are. So we thought we would find someone who had already done a lot of research about who lives in our neighbourhood and see what he thinks. We have Michael Berkman here, who is our local member for Maywa. Let's go and chat. Hi there. Hi Michael, good to see you. Thank you, you for too, taking sir. the time. Uh, it's a pleasure. We wanted to know why you think it's important for you to have information about people who live in your electorate. Well, for me personally, it's quite literally my job. Um, I, there's no way I can do this work and represent the community that, that I'm, you know, that I'm elected to represent without actually knowing what matters to them. Um, what are the issues that they face in their daily lives, and and you know how can governments work to actually meet those you know those basic needs and actually do the things that are important for them? So, you know that's that's kind of peculiar to me in my role in some ways. But I think just knowing who's around us, where they're at in life, is really important to have good you know well integrated communities and um, you know and to have that that sense of belonging in amongst not just the physical space we live in, but but you know, that community, that, community, that human so. community, yeah. yeah. So what do you think are some of the challenges for people in our local area? Yeah, that's a good question. Cause we, I mean, obviously we can recognize that this is, you know, by most measures of a pretty lucky area, you know, we're, a, we're a largely a wealthy area. You know, we don't struggle for a lot of, you know, our day to day needs, but there are obviously still people in our immediate surrounds in this community right here who do still struggle with those things. So I think, you know, despite the general demographics of the area, you know, those same things, you know, the basics that people struggle with are, are, are real issues for a lot of people um, here in Maywa. Um, I mean, there are, there are, you know, particular issues that come with being in an urban area as well. You know, it's, it's the traffic here on High Street, the developments going up around every street corner. There's those sorts of things as well. But, um, but I think it's really important to remember that, you know, that the basics really matter for, for people right across you know, Brisbane and Queensland. Good. Where do you see communities in our area working well as community? You mentioned it's not just about about the, the physical nature of the community, it's actually how the community and the relationships work. So where do you see our community working well as community? Yeah, look, we've, we've got some really, um, some really well organised, well coordinated and active community groups yeah. here in, in Maywa. Um, you know, and, and that's, you know, that in itself, I guess, is just a, you know, it's a hallmark of a really engaged and active community. Um, and that, you know, I, I always say to these groups and these people that that's the sort of thing that makes that makes my life and my work a lot easier because we've got these, you know, these organised representative bodies in a sense that can kind of speak for all parts of the community. Um, and I think as well, like, you know, we met not too long ago with, with, with a bunch of church leaders as well. So having seen these different institutions and corners of the community that are already kind of organizing themselves um, is something that's really valuable and that uh, certainly certainly for me and I think for the you know for the broader broader community around here. Excellent. Yeah. And so you know it's interesting I wonder sometimes if we do know our neighbours how well do you think people in our area know their neighbours? Maybe not as well as we might like and as well as we have done previously but I don't think that's universally the case like I know um, 
you know, one of my dear friends who lives around the corner and, um, you know, just near Essex Street Park, I know that that, that, that public space, that green space there in, in Indrapilly, like that has a whole community that buzzes around it constantly. They have their regular events there. They've got their Christmas party coming up. So, you know, th these, these kinds of really organic, you know, communities do emerge more often than we might realise. And I think, um, yeah, I, I think we see that in, in parts of the electorate, but I think there's plenty that we can do, you know, as, as leaders in the community and as elected representatives, there's more we can do to help foster that kind of autonomous growth of community. Michael, do you have a story about a time in our local area when neighbours have really, whether by circumstance or things that have thrown them together, got to know each other better? Yeah, there are there are plenty, but I think the best examples that I can that I can reach out to now are, are all to do with the, the COVID nineteen pandemic and the time we spend in lockdown responding to all of those challenges. Um, I think that you know that kind of grounding in the local area that we had through you know by force at that point. You know, we had to connect better with with our local spaces and with the people around us, and and we saw such an extraordinary outpouring of generosity at that point in time. You know people who, who had more capacity to, to give support and those who really needed it, everyone. There was just an openness in the community that was really, um, really quite incredible to see. So, you know, some of the some of the specific examples maybe are, um, you know, we had a lot of families that were at home, you know, parents struggling to work and, and teach kids. And I, I remember we had a, a teacher get in touch with us and we put it up on the, you know, the Facebook notice boards. She was just offering the time to help any kids that were struggling with learning outside of the classroom. You know, we had people who were dropping off, you know, just basics packs, so food. You know, there were plenty of people who slipped through the cracks of support um, back when, you know, when everything shut down. So, we had, yeah, we, we had people who were volunteering to both drop off food and to deliver that food out to, you know, to international students and others who, who really needed that support. It was just incredible to see, incredible to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was really encouraging. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much for your time, Michael. I know you have a very busy day, so we really appreciate you talking to us. It's my pleasure, too. Okay.